Hello dear students, I hope all of you are fine. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about a new selection, a new story, Unit 4, Lesson 21, The World According to Humphrey. Before starting, let's identify vocabulary. We have 10 target vocabulary for our story. Let's start. I want you to turn your textbook to pages 620621. You can see the 10 target vocabulary. Can you see them? Let's start reading and identifying the words. Number one is... 1. Appreciate. Many people highly value or appreciate their pets. So, number one is appreciate. What's the meaning of appreciate? Appreciate, it means, you can see the meaning in the context clause. It means value or to be thankful for. Appreciate, value or to be thankful. Number two. Two. Blaring. If a dog barks at loud blaring noises, it should be trained not to do that. So number two is blaring. Blaring it means loud or harsh. Blaring noises it means loud noises. Okay, number three. Three. Combination. People may feel a combination of love for and frustration with their pets. Combination. What's the meaning of combination? Combination, it means mixture. You can say mixture or union. Combination. Number four. Four. Promptly. If a dog needs to go out, it should be taken out promptly or right away. Promptly, the meaning you can see it in the text clues. It is right away. The meaning right away or quickly or directly. You can see many synonyms for this word. Next. Number five. Five. Introduce. You should carefully introduce a new pet to the other pets in your house. So what's the meaning of introduce? Introduce it means to bring or put in something new or different. Okay, number six. Six, nocturnal. Some pets, such as cats and hamsters, are nocturnal. They're most active at night. So, what's the meaning of nocturnal? You can see the meaning in the text clues. Yes, active, most active at night. Okay, number seven. Seven, feats. Many people enjoy teaching their pets to perform tricks and other feats of skill. Feats. Okay, number eight. Eight, effort. It takes effort or hard work to care for a pet, no matter what kind of animal it is. So, what's the meaning of effort? Effort or hard work. So, the meaning is hard work. Hard work. Number nine. Nine. Suggest. Experts suggest or recommend that people remain calm when training a pet. Suggest. Suggest. It means or recommend. So, what's the meaning of suggest? Recommend. Yes, and number 10 is... 10. Racket. Some pet birds can talk, but they can also create a loud racket by screaming. Racket. What's the meaning of racket? Racket, it means loud noise. Loud noise. Racket. And I don't want you to be confused with the tennis racket because racket it has two meanings in our story it means loud noise unpleasant noise so
So, let's start with worksheet 1, vocabulary. Let's go to the worksheets. The word according to Humphrey, you can see word, definition, sentences. You have the word appreciate. What's the meaning of appreciate? To be thankful for or value. And I want you to put it in a sentence. You have here one example. I want you to add more. Many visitors appreciate the art at the museum. Also blaring. Blaring, it means loud, harsh. You can see the definition and you can see the sentence. Combination, promptly, introduce, noctur nocturnal, feeds, effort, suggest, racket. You can see the words, definitions, and you can see sentences, examples. Start reading and practicing this. Let's go to activity number one. Activity number one, write the vocabulary so you can complete this exercise alone. Let's go to exercise number two. Choose the correct answer. Go to exercise, the last exercise for vocabulary, and this is good practice. I want you to use the context, context clues, and I want you to complete each sentence using the giving using the given vocabulary word so done for part one vocabulary let's go and start part two and it is reading so turn your textbook to page six two four okay who is the author who is the author the author is betty g bernie betty g bernie is the author and you know that Betty G. Bernie wrote her first book titled The Teddy Bear in the Woods. And she has many stories and many books. Okay. What is the genre of our story? The genre is a fantasy. A fantasy is the genre. What's the meaning of fantasy? Fantasy is an imaginative story that may have unrealistic characters and events are you as you read look for the story events the setting that could not happen in real life characters who behave in unrealistic ways so the genre is fantasy the author betty j bernie so let's start reading the story okay let's get to you can see the summary for our story can see what is the genre, fantasy, and who is the author, Betty G. Bernie. You can see the summary for the story. I want you to practice reading the summary and you will understand the whole story. It was about AJ's turn to take care of the class hamster and the main character is Humphrey. I want you to practice reading the summary with the, the, the main events. You can see main events in our story. And I want you to go to page number two. Use the book to answer the questions using the complete sentences. So question number one, who is, the narrating, who is narrating the story? What point of view is this? You can find the answer in page 626. Go read the page and find the answer. What does Humphrey discover about AJ's behavior in school from watching his family at home? You can go to page two, 627 and you can find the answer. Also, why do you think Mrs. Thomas suggested that Mr. Thomas go to bed? Okay, who is Mrs. Thomas? She is AJ's mother, and Mr. Thomas, his father. So you can find the answer in page 628. Explain why Humphrey decided to take the action that he did. You can find the answer in page 630. Why does Humphrey describe pulling the plug from the wall as one of his most difficult feats of his life? Okay, also you can find the answer in page 630. How does the Thomas family respond to life without TV? And how do you think the Thomas family will be different after Humphrey leaves? You have to go back to the story, read, and start answering the questions. So... Reading one, 
Done. Let's go to reading too, and let's start talking about the theme. So let's start talking about theme. What's the meaning of theme? So let's start. What is theme? Theme is the life lesson or moral that the reader learns from a story. And the theme is the big idea that the author wants you to take away from the story. Also, the theme can also be the main message in the story that all people can relate to. So the theme is the message, the life lesson, the message. So let's continue. So what is the theme? How do you identify the theme of the story? As you read the story, I want you to ask yourself, what do the characters learn or discover throughout the story? How do the characters deal with the conflicts in the story? While reading, I want you to ask yourself these two questions. Okay, let's see, you can see, this is Michael Jordan. And you know the Ma Michael Jordan, he's famous in basket, he's famous basketball player. So, let's read about Michael Jordan. In his sophomore year of high school, it means in his second year of high school, Michael Jordan tried out for the varsity basketball team at Laney High School in Wilmington. Varsity it means varsity it means university, North Carolina. But at five feet and eleven inches tall, the coach believed that Jordan was too short to play at that level. So Jordan was cut from the team. Jordan didn't let this obstacle obstacles defeat him. In fact, it pushed him to work even harder. He trained, trained vigorously and grew another four inches the following summer. When he finally made the varsity squad, Jordan averaged 25 points a game and went on to become one of the greatest basketball players in history. So what is the message? What is the lesson, the life lesson from this? Paragraph. That means you have to work hard, don't give up. If you want something, you have to work hard. Don't give up. So this is the message from the theme. Let's go to worksheet and starting solving, start solving them. To worksheet 3, you have definition. You can see the definition for what is theme. And you have to ask yourself, what message does the author want me to learn from the story? Here you have this web. I want you to write, read the story, the word according to Humphrey. Write what is the theme of the story here in the middle circle. And I want you to write details from the story that support the theme. You can do this because we did this together in the class. Theme is the word, according to Humphrey, is a fantasy story. In it, hamster helps a family learn an important lesson. The lesson the family learns over the course of the story is the story theme. Paying careful attention to the text evidence, including the character's thoughts, actions, they can help you figure out the story's theme, the way in which characters grow and change also reveal the theme. Mr. and Mrs. Thomas decide not to plug in the TV. Why did they do this? What did the Thomas family learn about television? What is the theme of our story? The theme is watching too much TV can keep people from having fun in other ways. Watching TV, too much TV is not good for our health. And watching too much TV, it will keep you away from your family. So this is the theme of our story. Give me the evidence. The character's thoughts. Humphrey thinks the Thomas family watches too much TV. What Humphrey thinks? 
his thoughts and also about AJ we have another thought when AJ thinks that his friendship with Garth, Garth is over you can find them in the story so the characters thought this is one example you can go back to the story start reading and write characters thought write Humphrey's thoughts or AJ's AJ thoughts okay and what about the character's action? Character's action when Humphrey unplugs the TV. When Humphrey unplugs the TV, this is action. And also another action, Garth and AJ have fun cleaning Humphrey's cage and playing games. This is action. Way, ways characters change. See the Thomas family. At the beginning, they didn't talk to each other, but later, the Thomas family talk to one another more often. Often, they play games together and tell stories. So, after TV, they have time to spend it together. Change. Let's continue our worksheet. Start answering this worksheet, and maybe you can ask help from your parents or from your brother or sister or we can communicate you can call me and i will help you solving this worksheet you can see you have an example about the theme this is a story called a home for melvin and vineyard so i want you to read the story and then i want you to answer the questions you can see the inference map down i want you to write what is the theme of our story and write details about the theme you can find all in the story so start reading the story to answer the graphic organizer or to answer the the map down write the theme write details so that's for reading let's go to part three and it is grammar Today our grammar is about comparative and superlative adjectives. Comparative and superlative adjectives. Adjectives have three degrees of comparison. Positive, comparative, and superlative. What's the meaning of positive adjective? Positive adjective states the quality. When you will say that Mazin is tall, tall is adjective. Also, we have comparative. Comparative, when you compare two boys or two things, so two people or two things, you will say, Mazen is taller than Ammar. So, you can say that this is the comparative. And you have superlative, when you compare three or more, you will say that Mazen is the tallest. Let's continue. If you have one syllable adjective and mostly two syllable adjectives ending in Y, add ER to the positive to form the comparative and add EST to the positive to form the superlative. So you can see blue, bluer, bluest. So blue is the positive, blue is comparative, bluest Bluer is comparative, bluest is the superlative. So, pretty, prettier, prettiest. And I want you to remember that if we have Y, you will change Y to I and add ER or EST. Ugly, uglier, ugliest. Round, rounder, roundest. Next. For adjectives with three or or more syllables and the other two syllable adjectives form the comparative by adding more or less in the positive and most or least to form the superlative how let's see when i will say intelligent intelligent you cannot say intelligenter no so you will say more intelligent this is comparative and you will say most intelligent this is the superlative because we have more than one syllable we have in te 
intelligent. So intelligent, you will say more intelligent, most intelligent, beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful, alarming, less alarming, or least alarming. Let's continue. But in English, we have, as with so much of the English language, there are exceptions to the previous rules. Some adjectives have an irregular form of comparison, and you have to memorize them by heart. So, good. What is the comparative of good? Better. And the superlative best. Bad. Worse. Worst. Much. More, most, little, less, least, well, worse, worst, many, more, most, far, farther, farthest. So these are exceptions in our rule. So this column is the comparative and this is the superlative. Here missing W, so well, you have to add well, worse, worst. I want you to remember that than is used to compare something with the rest of the class of things to which it belongs. So than we use it with comparative. Jack is taller than the rest of the class. So taller is comparative adjectives. How did you know? You can see er and also followed by than. So this is comparative adjective next when the word the is used when comparing adjectives use the superlative form that has the biggest house in the neighborhood this is the biggest house so biggest is superlative adjective and you can see the the biggest house this is superlative we used the also, I want you to remember that never use double comparative or superlative. You cannot say more cheaper. How can we say more cheaper? More is comparative and cheaper with ER is comparative. You, this is wrong. Most cheapest. No, you will say cheaper, cheapest. You cannot say more better because better is comparative. So no need to put more. And also most best. This is wrong. But best only. So remove most, remove more, remove more, and remove most. So you can't use double comparative or superlative. Now let's read the worksheet. Worksheet 4. And it is about grammar and writing. You can see explanation for comparative adjectives. You can read the rule. Also, you have exercises. I want you to solve them. Also, the comparative with more. If it is more than two syllables, so you put more. And you have also exercises down. You can do it. Let's go down and let's see superlative adjectives. Superlative adjectives, you will put most. Because it is more than two person or places or things. So you will put most, the most. See, a rose is pretty, but Tom thinks, and, but Tom thinks, orchid is, so you will write superlative. And what is the superlative of pretty? Prettiest. Don't forget to change Y to I. And this is superlative prettiest. So you can continue solving the story using superlative adjectives. And don't forget that superlative adjectives, you will add EST or you will add most. Also here write the appropriate comparative and superlative adjectives in each sentence. Sam is... A runner than 
his older sister so what i will put here i will put superlative or comparative i want you to read the sentence carefully number one you can see then so then it is comparative and also here i'm comparing sam is a runner than his older sister so I'm, I'm comparing sam with his older sister so i'm comparing between two people two persons so sam is a faster so you will put here faster runner than his older sister that was the hard test we've had all year okay this sentence is superlative or comparative i will ask myself that was the the it comes with superlative so the hard hardest and keep on continue answering the other questions like wait read the sentence see if you have the or than if the comparing between two things or more and then you can write the superlative or comparative adjectives that done for grammar let's go to the last part and it is writing and inshallah the next video i will focus more on writing because this is a new writing it is a descriptive paragraph writing a descriptive paragraph how can we write a descriptive paragraph you can see the parts of the paragraph it starts with topic sentence supporting details and the closing sentence or conclusion you can see here that descriptive paragraph it describes people animals or things you can see one example for you you can see the title my house the topic sentence you can see the details about my house and the conclusion i want you to read and if and i want you to practice reading the story practice the exercises for reading for vocabulary and for grammar for writing see you soon assalamu alaikum thanks a lot